guys, so I thought I would do a video talking to you about books I need to pick back up. <laughs> so you all know it's like life happens and you're perhaps enjoying a book, absolutely nothing wrong with it, but one reason or another leads you to put it down and then weeks if not months go by and you don't pick it back up because you get distracted by new books in that time period. And I have a pile of books like that that I was enjoying but life and they got put down and I really want to return to them and either start back from the beginning or finish them if it's not been too long since I started them. So I thought I would talk about those books in this video and perhaps we could sympathise a little bit with one another, hopefully I'm not the only person that does this and we can chat a little bit more, you can also convince me to pick one of these books up before the other. Importantly these are not books I have DNF'd or decided not to finish because they were books I was enjoying and genuinely want to finish. Um, I am all for DNFing books, if a book is not doing it for me, it's out. <laughs> These however were not those books and they just perhaps got picked up in the wrong moment. So the first book on my list is the one I think I picked up the most recently and put down the most recently but I noticed that I haven't gone back for it for a few weeks now and I keep thinking don't let this happen Jean, pick it back up, finish it, you're past halfway and that is Ovid's Heroids. Now this one is slightly easier to pick back up because it is a selection really of narrative poems and as long as you finish one of them you can easily come back and start the next one without worrying too much about what's gone before. But these are ancient Roman poems by Ovid written as letters from mainly female characters of mythology to other characters of mythology. So quite often these are letters from women to their lovers or their ex-lovers or men they're in love with, um, but there is a bit more variety than that. Some of the examples are things like Hypsipyle writing to Jason, or Hypsipyle was a woman that Jason um, that stayed with, had a child with before he met Medea and then he left Hypsipyle on her island and never went back for her. We also have Helen to Paris, Ariadne to Theseus and some lesser known myths in there as well and it is such a fascinating read. I love Ovid, he's one of my favourite ancient writers despite not being a Roman historian or a Roman scholar, I'm very much a Greek scholar but I love Ovid and I was really enjoying this and like I said I'm past halfway, I'm at page 130 and there's less than 260 pages so I do need to pick this one back up and read the rest of these women's letters, I just need that reminder. I think my problem with this one is that I was actively reading it before Christmas and then never took it with me to Edinburgh when I went home for Christmas and I was there for a few weeks so in between that time I started other things and this one kind of got left behind and I didn't pick it back up when I returned. So no longer, you, you hear me now, I will finish this one soon. A book I started whilst I was in Edinburgh last year with my dad was The Corn King and The Spring Queen by Naomi Mitchison. This is a fantasy-esque historical fiction piece set in antiquity um, but it follows a civilization that is not one that's real or that we know anything about. Naomi Mitchison was inspired by the fact that some remains had been found on this island and she created a whole civilization around these people in which the women of this island are sometimes witches. So like I said, there is magic in there, there is fantasy in there, but it also feels like a piece of ancient historical fiction because the characters go then and visit civilizations that were real, like the Spartans, and I loved that combination of things. It's so beautiful, and this is my dad's book. It was a book he recommended to me, and I started reading it when he was still with us, um, and it's quite a chunky book though, and just because of the mental state I was in last year, a lot of books got started and put down if I, if I, if I wasn't quite able to engage fully with them, and I'm actually at about page 100 in this, although it is 600 pages long with tiny font, so I want to pick it back up, I, I want to finish it. One of the things that is slightly deterring me is kind of I won't be able to talk about it with my dad and that's quite difficult but at the same time I want to read this and I, I want to read all those books that he recommended to me because even though I can't talk about the content with him anymore I can still read them and feel like he's here and that he's recommended them to me so not only was this a lovely book that I was really enjoying and want to finish but 
I want I want to make that more part of my life and I don't want to be deterred from doing that because it might make me a little bit sad because that's okay. So I do intend on picking this one back up this year. Something completely different though is a book I started ages ago and one reason or another, I think it was just, um, I started it when I first moved to London and I started a new job and I had a lot going on and it got put to the side but I was really enjoying it and that is The Joy of Tax by Richard Murphy. The subtitle is How a Fair Tax System Can Create a Better Society and that's pretty much what this is all about. It is a really, really readable book on the different types of tax that exist, how tax can be used to the um, fairest and best way by governments, um, how it's actually a really positive thing that can create a better society if it's done fairly and um, explaining all of those different taxations to you, kind of what are the how each affects people with different amounts of income so you can kind of judge which is the fairest and I just think this is brilliant because I do think the right kind of taxation is a fantastic system and it's something I really believe in, progressive taxation and um, I want to know how to better articulate and explore the nuances of that topic and this book was doing such a good job of teaching me about that but like I said, I got distracted. I think I'm only about a third of the way maybe a little over a third, I'm not quite halfway through it, um, but I do wonder if I should maybe start at the beginning. I, I do remember some of what this taught me, so I might even just go back a couple of chapters and start again from there because I think the very beginning I, I've got is in my head. <laughs> um, but I do want to read this, I want to be able to talk about it, I want to then read more books on economics, but I feel like I need to finish this one before I can move on to more economic works. <laughs> on audiobook, I do have some books I started listening to and then never finished, and one of those is Who Fears Death by Nnedi Okorafor. This is one of the only books for the Feminist Orchestra book club that I didn't finish. I was usually really, really good. <laughs> I mean, that seems like it should be because since I was running it, um, but I did not finish this book and I think in part it was the content, maybe the format, but I found it difficult to listen to and because of that I kept stopping listening, going back, stopping listening and that's not to say it wasn't an amazing book, it was just difficult. Um, it deals with really heavy subjects, it deals with sexual assault, it deals with female genital mutilation and I think audiobook was maybe not the right format for it. I think I should have maybe read this one in physical book and I would really like to finish it, find out what happens. It's a kind of blend of fantasy and science fiction and it's the first in a series and I really want to read more Nedia Korofor but I don't feel like I can until I finish this one because I think it was a fantastically constructed fantasy science fiction novel with really important themes in there and a really intriguing, fascinating central character so I would really recommend it from what I've read so I should recommend it to myself and continue and finish. The next one is actually the only one on the list where I can't quite make up my mind whether I am going to finish it. Like I mentioned in the beginning, I am so pro DNFing books but sometimes you don't know, do you want to DNF a book and you get a little bit hesitant. And that's My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. I know everybody loves Daphne du Maurier. Well, not everybody, but lots of people do. And I did read Rebecca and I enjoyed Rebecca. I didn't fall in love with it. However, I did think I would try some of her other works because of the elements I enjoyed in Rebecca that I hoped to get from her other books. And I started My Cousin Rachel. And I'm sure when you heard me talk about it before, I was really enjoying it. First third, first half or so, I thought this book was brilliant, I was enjoying it even more than Rebecca, I thought it was so intriguing, I loved the combination of characters and the mysteries going on in there, and it just started to lag, seriously, like it is too drawn out, and although I kind of want to get to the culmination of the story and find out what happens, I'm bored at the point I'm in, I feel like we have just been in the same point for far too long, and I felt that a little bit with Rebecca too, as if it was a little bit drawn out too much, I don't know, like nothing was happening but not in a good way and I just can't decide whether to persevere. I know, like I said, lots of people love Daphne du Maurier so I'm sure lots of you are going to say, finish it. And maybe that's just what I need, a little kick up the backside to get to the end and it will be an overall positive experience. But right now, the bit that I'm in is just the same. It's just, um, Rachel and the narrator living in this house and it's very slow 
and like I said not in a good way because I don't mind slow narratives or slow books or plotless books but for me it doesn't work in the way it should right now which is crazy because like I said I was really enjoying it at first so this is one slight slight outlier of the group <laughs> here we don't know whether I'm going to finish this one or not so let me know what you think and the next one is a short story collection that I have been reading on my kindle the only issue is I don't have my kindle here it's in Edinburgh because I think I mentioned um, I was having issues reading on my kindle because of RSI problems in my wrists like with Ovid because it's short stories it should be really easy for me to pick back up and that is The Accusation by Bandy. I was really enjoying this, I was about halfway through, if not more than halfway through this short story collection and they are realist short stories set in North Korea and the author is North Korean and has written under the pseudonym Bandy because they are or where when this book came out still living in North Korea and this book kind of exposes some of the horrors of people's lives living in North Korea and it's really well done and really interesting so I definitely want to finish this one I just need to decide whether I'm going to try and use my Kindle again or what. Last but not least however is American War by Omar El Akkad. This is a dystopian or speculative future novel set um, a few decades from now in America during a new or second civil war. This civil war was the catalyst of the civil war was environmental issues, although obviously it's a accumulation of lots of different things that have once again sort of divided the north and the south. And our central characters are living in a part of America which is entirely flooded because of global warming and their houses and they travel by boats and their houses are kind of on stilts and things like that. And they have to move to a refugee camp and I'm just under halfway through this one. And I was really, really enjoying it, but it w I was reading it last year when I was in London and ended up moving back to Edinburgh for quite a long time and left this one in London, so it never got finished. So I would like to return to it. This is a proof copy, as you can maybe tell. Um, it's now out properly. This was months ago. But those are the books that are just currently surrounding me, reminding me that I haven't finished them, whether they be pretend sitting next to my bed as if I'm picking them up or on a bookshelf because I've accepted they're not quite on my actively reading list. But I should really finish some of them soon. So if you've read any of these books and think I should pick them up first, then do let me know. Or if you just think any of them sound particularly intriguing and would love to hear my final thoughts on them, then let me know and that might inspire me also to pick them back up. And hopefully just filming this video has got me more excited again. I think it has. And also I would like to know if you do the same thing. Does this happen? You are enjoying a book, you cannot fault a book, but life means that it gets waylaid and you wait weeks if not months without reading it and start to feel like do you pick it back up or do you pick a new book up and it gets, it gets, you get a bit stressed <laughs> about it, I don't know, let me, let me know. Um, I do hope you've enjoyed this slightly different video though and I hope you are having a lovely week. Until next time guys, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon, bye.